Hello everybody, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development episode. And today I am going to try to figure out how Capital Gains works in this model. It is driving me batty. I just, I have no idea what's going on here. I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm so, so very clueless. So, um, our starting principle is 3,000. So that means that this should still tell us that our starting principle is 3,000, and that's working perfectly. That is exactly what our code is saying. Um, or at least it will, if I can bring up the correct, the correct screen. Hello, JUnit. Yeah. So I need to withdraw 7,000 here, which means our total withdrawals will be 7,500 divided by 0.75. Whoa, too much. Um, hmm. Well, let's withdraw 6,500. Means our total withdrawals will be 9,333. Let's see if that's correct. I have hopes that this today will be the last day I struggle with this particular issue. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I mean, who knows? I mean, really, who knows? So if I've withdrawn 9,333 and my capital gains is 7,000, that means that I've reduced the principal by 2,333, which means that the principal should be 667. Any bets on whether this is going to work? Well, ah, hallelujah, it worked. Ah, finally. Oh, boy. So I think I finally got this thing working. I, I'm i so confused now. And also, I record, you know, I only record about an hour at a time. So um, this is very fragmented work. Plus, I have to stop every 15 minutes to start a new video. So I've really gotten lost. But hopefully the test will protect me from that to an extent. Um, so now that I've got that working, I think, I need to go through and fix the other tests that rely on that. Um, so I think this, this test here is actually no longer correct. I just need to add in the other stuff. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I think this can become ending principle. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, withdrawals less than capital gains do not re re reduce principal. There we go. Um, then, yeah. So I'm going to just try to make this a little clearer. Total withdrawn is new dollars. 9,333 and capital gains equals new dollars 7,000 and we also need to document that to do we pay capital compounding capital gains tax regardless uh, even when compounded amount is greater than capital gains. This is just a, to match, and we do this to match the spreadsheet. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, I'll come back to it. It won't make any more sense later, but I might have a bit more time to explain it. So, um, so now we're going to say principal 
reduced by is going to equal total withdrawn. I know I previously said that I didn't like to repeat my calculations in the test, but this code is pretty hard to understand, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, so our expected principal should equal our starting principal uh, minus principal reduced by. And if I did that right, that should still work. So, actually, let's just comment this out for the moment. All our tests should still pass. There we go. Um, and then lastly, let's, uh, let's withdraw another thousand. And in this case, since the nature of the situation has changed, um, I want the principal to go negative when we're overdrawn. So at this point, now we've withdrawn a total of 8,000, 1,000 divided by 0.75. We've withdrawn 10,066, so our principal should equal minus 667. Oh, um, that's interesting. We've withdrawn a total of 500, 6,500. It is 8,000. 8,000 divided by 0.75. Oh, well, no because that last withdrawal is not subject to the capital gains tax. So total withdrawn is 9,333, and then another 1,000 is 8,333. So, uh, or uh, it's 10,333. So that is the correct answer. Good, that covers that. Now let's just... Okay, so I'm going to toss these into the scratch pad. Um, and now let's take a second look at capital gains tax. Treat all withdrawals as subject to capital gains tax until all capital gains. Okay, that actually looks like it's working properly. Okay, so I think, I think, although actually at this point I have no idea, I'll need to do the desk check, I think I've done everything properly. Now I'm going to extract starting capital gains because that's what this calculation is, and we do it in a couple of places. See if we can do that again. Oh, I thought it might uh, be smart enough to realize that that was a repeated call, but apparently not. So let's pull this data out and put it up here. Let's put it next to starting principle. We can inline that. Um, we can inline that. We can get rid of that, and here we can say starting capital gains, I think, yes, 
and then we can inline that. And everything should still work. Good. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, I need to document this. That's what this is all about. So, let's say that we can pay compounding tax on, on capital gains, even though that Is tax, extra tax, uh, so what's happening here is that if our, comp if our capital gains is 3,000, we're still paying tax on the amount we withdraw to pay the tax. Um, uh, yeah, that's just to match the spreadsheet. even when uh, compounded amount is not capital gains. I think part of the issue here is that we are trying to match the spreadsheet, and once we match the domain more clearly, um, this code will get cleaner. I mean, the code is actually, it's pretty clean. It's just hard to understand. Um, and I think that may be just lack of a pairing partner to help me really review this and think of something new. Maybe it's just the nature of the game. Um, I do know that when I worked in the spreadsheet, I found it easier, but I wasn't trying to narrate 15-minute videos, so who knows. Anyway, that's, that's done. Uh, everything should still work. Now, um, I had a couple of comments, one from Kim, Kim Grossman, another from another person whose name I forget right now. Sorry about that. Um, suggesting that the max for dollars be a static method. I think that's a great idea. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let's see. We'll bring up a dollars test and dollars. So if you'll recall from a previous video, I was really struggling with what to do with this. Um, and the obvious answer well, obvious now is make it a static variable, like um, like math. So I'm going to do that. This, of course, won't pass. But that should, uh, but some other things will fail due to compiler errors. Let me just see if I've got this working. Yeah, I'm taking a big step here. Um, mea culpa. All right, now it will fail due to compiler. Oh, that's interesting. I guess due to the way I ran that, it, it stuck it. Let's see, run all the tests. Um, okay, let's bring this back. Oh, no, not that way. Um, okay, there's our errors. And that should work. It does. Okay, we can take that off. Um, and that should do it. Uh, that's our time for today. So thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.